Hi everybody and welcome back to class. It's a very snowy and cold Monday on the 15th of February. Hope everyone had a great Valentine's Day weekend. But it's time to get back to work. As many of you noticed, Blackboard crashed at a really bad time. That was late last night and I heard from several of you saying that you were trying to upload your first draft of the classical argument but you couldn't put it in. That happens, unfortunately. And I appreciate you notifying me. I was able to check and make sure that I was having the same problem you were. So our plan of action going forward, if this happens again, and it probably will, is just notify me that you're trying to submit your assignment. It's not taking it. And my response is typically give it until the next day and try again. As much as Blackboard goes down, they're really pretty good at getting it back up and operating the, by the next day. We are in class session six, and this one's a little bit lighter than maybe some of the work that we've done in previous sessions, so thank God for that. I'm going to open up the session six folder. Of course, by now, everyone has turned in their classical argument, their first draft. It's not a final, just a first draft, and you won't be turning in the final version until the end of the next class session. There is some reading for this week on the classical argument, and this is a little bit different and I think kind of interesting. All of these selections are related to fallacies in logic, in ethos and pathos, etc. But these are the errors that people make when trying to construct this type of argument. So the interest, or excuse me, the reading I think is actually pretty interesting. And I'm just going to open up the first one on logical fallacies. We'll take a quick scan of that. Of course, there's a YouTube video enclosed. You'll want to watch that. And a few others of these also have YouTube videos included. But because we are writing a persuasive paper, and notice that this has more than one page, we want to make sure that the logic that we're using to persuade our audience is sound and that it's not based upon errors of presumption. So we have one on logical fallacies, fallacious ethos, fallacious pathos, fallacious logos, fallacious kairos, etc. Read through those, watch the YouTube videos when they are available. It's pretty interesting content. Maybe a little more interesting than we typically see. Next we have the classical argument paper assignment folder. And I don't know that you really need this one. Of course it has the PowerPoint, but we looked at that in the last class session. Here are the paper instructions, but you would have looked at those before you wrote the assignment. And here is the peer review. And you were supposed to have included that at the end of your first draft. Now, I'll be honest with you, I haven't looked at all the drafts yet. In fact, I've only looked at a couple because they just came in last night. And I will get through them as quickly as I can. But I'm going to assume that everyone followed the instructions correctly and attached the peer review to their draft. If you didn't, well, you should have. Here are the peer review questions. Those are the same as the ones that are contained in this assignment folder. So again, you probably don't need this. You are going to need this section, however, and this is for peer review. And if we open this up, I believe there's one already in here. Yep, Brooke got hers in right here. So in addition to sending me your draft, which you did, which was due last night, for this week, you're going to need to go ahead and attach it here. And we'll open up Brooks' paper briefly. Notice that Brooke did her MLA header exactly right. Good job. Good title. I'm not going to read through this. Two people in the class will. There's her works cited page. I'm just scanning this quickly, but it looks to be in pretty good shape. And there are the peer review questions. Good job, Brooke. You did it right. So each of you will paste, post your paper there with the peer review 
at the very end. Now, what do you do with this once you have it? Well, you're going to look through the list. You can look by name, you can look by title. I don't assign you someone to review. I'm going to let you pick yourselves. But you must choose two, read the paper, read it in great detail, and then answer the peer-reviewed questions with specific information. Now, in your reading, you may find that the person has some typos, misspelled words, grammatical errors. You should point out to the writer that they need to check their grammar, check their spelling, etc. But you are not supposed to go ahead and try and point out every single error to fix the paper for them. Indicate that they have those errors and that they need attention, but they'll find it themselves, or you'll find it yourself if you have some on your own essay. Add those to the peer review at the end of the draft. And then when you go to the discussion board and look at your own draft, you should see at least two peer reviews from other students within the class. Someone else who has read your paper and given you feedback. And I want your feedback to be confined mostly to the argument itself. Does the argument work? Is it logical? Is it persuasive? What did you think of the read? And of course, everyone will get feedback from me as well. And that looks like it might be it. So again, open up the readings folder. There are some very interesting readings on fallacies of logic. You probably don't need this folder, nor do you need this one. Make sure you attach your essay to this discussion board. And each of you will read two papers. You could read more if you'd like, but two is the requirement. And answer the peer review questions with specific information. Hit reply to the author and upload your comments. Again, this is just a draft. It's not a finished product. You put in your draft last night. You're going to get review throughout the course of this week. And then next week, we'll be turning in the final version. I have not read any of the drafts yet. I will be working on that as quickly as I can. And I hope to get comments back to you as soon as possible. I will work over that, on that over the next couple of days but be looking for that from me in the Grade Center. That's it for this week. As I promised, it's a little bit lighter. I hope everyone's having a great time in the class. I know I am. If you need to get in touch with me, reach me anytime at 812-498-4200, or you can send me an email at m-s-t-e-n-g-e-r and the number one at ivytech.edu. Have a great week, everybody.